Man, 2020 has been a year. And the fact is, you get to decide how 2020 is going to be remembered. So I'm excited that you're gonna check out today's message. My name is Zach and I pastor Revolution Church, a church all about starting a revolution of grace in your life. You can learn more about the ministry by going to revyourlife.com or even get involved or support the ministry financially. You can also follow along on social media, whatever your favorite social media is, we're probably there, so check those out. Most of all, we're just excited about closing 2020 with you. Hey, Revolution Church family. We are all online this weekend. We also have our God Behind Bars guys and our military joining us all over the world. I'm honored to be with every single one of you this weekend. I'm in my living room with a word that God put on my heart to help us close out 2020 strong. Our pastors, our staff have done such an incredible job this year. Our dream team, with all of the craziness 2020 has brought us, I'm just grateful for you team, and I hope that you're enjoying the weekend. You know, every week at Rev, we close by declaring this together. I am deeply loved, highly favored, greatly blessed, totally righteous, and destined to reign all because of Jesus. It's a reminder empowering us to get out into the world and to keep it kingdom. Romans chapter 5 verse 17 says, For if because of one man's trespass, that's Adam, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Let me summarize that verse and really the entire Bible like this. God made us to reign in life. Sin and Satan stole your crown, but then Jesus restored your crown at the cross. Maybe in 2020, you forgot this, that in Christ, you are destined to reign. You get to decide now whether 2020 will just be a terrible memory, a joke, or if 2020 will go down as one of the years you grew the most, persevered the most, got stronger and more faithful. We started this year with Vision 2020, and we talked about Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And then 2020 sprung forth. Woo, come on. None of us thought that 2020 would be what it's been. A crazy wilderness, a desert. Yet, God has made a way. God has kept his promises. He has done new things in our souls. At the cross, Jesus took his royal crown and he crowned you as an heir to his kingdom. And the entire Bible is really the story of you getting your crown back. If you are in Christ, you're a part of his royal family. You are royalty. But sometimes Christians think like this about life. Life's just a long struggle. Being a Christian is hard. I'll never get ahead. I'll never be good enough. I call it an Eeyore mentality. Oh, bother, right? One day I'll finally die and then everything will be okay. For now I have to just grin and bear it. I'm just destined for pain. <laughs> so we think that way and what do we get? We get pain. But the Bible teaches us that because of Jesus, we are not destined for pain. We are destined to reign. There will be pain, but it's not our focus. The future will hand us more 2020s, but Jesus is still king, and you are an heir in his kingdom. I knew a guy years back that had that Eeyore mentality so bad that even when great things happened, he couldn't focus on God's goodness. He got a promotion and said, it's just more work. He bought an amazing house and said, it's just more to clean. He never reigned in anything because of his thinking. What does it look like to reign in life right now, even in a year like 2020. Being destined to reign means that you have power and authority to be who God created you to be and do what God created you to do. Power and authority. Let's talk about power. Ephesians 1 says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the heavenly realm. So, don't miss it, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead was given to you. It lives inside of you. You hold the Holy Spirit. So why are you so worried about your checkbook, your diagnosis, your job? See, if we just live naturally, we will always focus on the problems we have rather than the power that we have. 
Jesus did not only die for your sins, he also died to give you power over anything you face. If you're in Christ, you've got that power. Things can happen when you pray and believe God in faith. Did stuff happen when Jesus prayed? Yes. But pastor, sometimes God says no when I pray. Okay, so you're just never going to have faith or pray? See, we focus on pain and problems so much. that Sometimes we won't even pray in faith. You get to choose what your focus is. Is your focus on the problem or on your crown and the power that comes with it? So in Christ you have power, but you also have authority. Matthew 16 says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus said, you have authority to say on earth as it is in heaven. This is what he was talking about. In Matthew 6, when he taught us how to pray, Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He was saying, how about I just give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven so you can be a part of my work in the world right now. So when Jesus gave us our crowns back at the cross, it came with great benefits, power and authority. Also a lot of other things. In John 14, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So we ask in the name of Jesus because it carries authority and power. You're not out there on your own struggling unless you choose to believe that and think that. Keep it kingdom. You have the keys to the entire kingdom. You have your crown and you are destined to reign. Now, if you have power and authority, what do you have power and authority over? You have power and authority over three things. One, because of Jesus, you have authority and power over Satan. See, all through scripture, we see Satan as the father of lies. With Adam and Eve, he deposited a lie. With Job, he lied. With Judas, he lied. Even with Jesus, he lied. Jesus was tempted in the desert, and we see Satan trying to get Jesus to buy into lies. Satan lies to us, and when we choose to take a bite and believe those lies about who we are, we end up living without our crowns and with the wrong focus. You have authority and power over Satan. You do not have to believe his lies for one second. In Luke 10, Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, which was describing levels of demons, not literal snakes and scorpions. And then it says, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Satan uses lies to get us thinking wrong, which then takes us to places we never wanted to go. This is what Satan's lies sound like. Everything is hard. You're just an addict. Your future won't be good. Your life will never change. When we believe these lies, Satan doesn't even have to make us actually do sinful things. If he can just get us thinking wrong about who we are, we will naturally do the wrong things. If he can take away our kingdom mindset, he wins. Never forget, the devil is the father of lies who wants to keep you from living as the royalty that you are in Christ. Second, because of Jesus, I have power and authority over my sin. You have to believe that. Because right believing will lead to right living. See, when Jesus died on the cross, the power to overcome your sin was given to you. In fact, it's even better than that. The gospel tells us that in Christ, you are already perfect. You already are not the person you used to be. That's called grace. It's called righteousness. Romans 6 says, sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. So when you get that and you believe that, rather than just trying in your own power to modify your behavior and do better, you actually change because right believing about who you are in Christ will lead to godly living. When you truly get how grace has already changed you forever, you have no desire to walk back to your sin. We still sin, but in Christ, we are no longer that person anymore. We are saints in God's sight, people wrapped up in a righteousness of Jesus. Believe that and you will change. 
Stop focusing on how bad you are all the time and start focusing on how good Jesus is and how perfect he already made you in God's kingdom. Do that and you'll change from the inside out. What we do is we try behavior modification all on our own. We go, don't think about the sin. Don't think about the sin. And what are you thinking about? The sin. You're just spinning your wheels, focusing on the sin and yourself. Jesus says, hey, you don't even have to focus on it because I already took care of it at the cross forever. It is finished and you are destined to reign in life. You've got power and authority in Christ to be more than a conqueror when it comes to your sin. Last, because of Jesus, I have authority and power over my struggles. What a word for 2020. Have you ever thought about this? Your struggles are not struggles for your Savior. At the cross, he gave you authority and power in and over every struggle. 1 John 5 says, We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you are in Christ, you are victorious. You win because Jesus won. So listen, you do not uh, ever have to allow a struggle to win the battle for your heart and your mind. But how do you get that victory according to this scripture? It's faith. Faith. See, drama is only drama if you let it be drama. Sometimes we just have to categorize our struggles. Think this way. Is this a five-hour thing? Maybe even a five-day thing or a five-month thing? The point is we let so many little five-hour, five-day, or five-month struggles ruin our life when the truth is it'll be over before we wake up the next day or the next week. What if we learn to believe right about our struggles? We could start trusting our Savior with every single one of them. This is important because Jesus promised us that in this world there will be pain and there will be struggle. They will not disappear for us. In fact, in some ways you'll go through more pain. Isaiah 54 says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me. So we know struggles will continue to form, but in Christ, our heritage is that those struggles will never prosper. In Christ, you have authority and power over Satan, sin, and struggles. So listen, turn your eyes to Jesus, change your focus to him and these truths, and you will change your life. What if you started thinking as the heir that you are in God's family? What if you could believe deep in your soul that in Christ you carry the king of kings authority and power over sin, Satan, and struggles? It would change everything. Keep it kingdom. Let's pray together. Would you bow your heads? Deuteronomy 28 says, If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you will always be on the top and never at the bottom. See, the truth is we're saying keep it kingdom, but we don't get it perfect. We don't always keep it kingdom. We make dumb decisions. We focus on the wrong things. We disobey. But here's the good news. Jesus got all of it right every single time. At the cross, Jesus guaranteed you will be the head, not the tail. At the cross, Jesus made you totally righteous. He gave you your crown back and restored you to where he made you to be, a part of his royal family forever. He obeyed perfectly and paid the price for you, and you are destined to reign. This is why it's so important for us to celebrate God's goodness together and take the focus off the junk we face every week. This is a time for us to reload and declare together that God is good, that because of the cross, I have power and authority to reign in life over sin, Satan, and struggles. Because of the cross, nothing that forms against me will ultimately win because Jesus already won. Let's celebrate that. Listen, if you're ready to make that change in your mindset, just tell God right now. You could pray something like this. Father, I'm ready to change how I've been thinking. 2020 really did a number on me. I haven't had the right focus. And Jesus, right now, I return my focus 
to my salvation in you. And listen, maybe you've never had that moment where you give Jesus your life. We want to help you take that step right now, a step into God's kingdom, a step to become his son, his daughter, a step to be an heir like you are always meant to be, a step to restore your crown. If that's you, God sees your heart. He knows what's going on in your soul. And I just want you to pray this out loud wherever you are and receive him as your Lord and Savior. You can pray like this. Heavenly Father, I give you my life. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. I repent from my sins and I turn to you, God. Make me a brand new person. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we want to know about the step that you're taking, and I would love to know how I can pray for you. So use the link that you see right now or press the button and fill out our connection card. Let us know about your decision. And I'll see you next week, church, in 2021. I'm praying that you have an amazing new year. Now let's declare this together. Let's say it out loud wherever we are because it's the truth. Let's let it get into our hearts and our souls. Would you declare this with me? I am deeply loved, highly favored, greatly blessed, totally righteous, and destined to reign all because of Jesus.